The basic rigging is a number four straight shanked mustad ring-eyed hook. And let me slide this grub back into place here. Actually, I'll rig it for you. Um, what you wanna do, you've got that hook, got that hook on the end of your leader, take your grub, you want that, the, the bend of the hook to end up in opposition to the tail on the grub, okay? I take my octopus hook, I start it in, it's kind of like I'm baiting up a salmon egg. I start the hook into the bait, I push it around, and then I kind of mold it around the eye, just so it holds on. The hook point is almost exposed. There you go. This is a slow death hook right here. You can see the bend in the hook. This is the hook that I rely on. A guy here on the channel turned me on to these about a year and a half ago. These are the hooks that I rely on and that I recommend you rely on when you're out trolling worms or gar gulp crawlers for trout. Howdy guys, Kel Kellogg here. I've had a bunch of requests for this video. We are gonna talk trout fishing hooks. And uh, we're gonna talk about four main styles of hooks. Um, I do use treble hooks, but we're gonna talk, not talk about them right here. Um, I'm gonna talk about octopus hooks, bait holder hooks, ring eye hooks, and slow death hooks. And I get, I get a lot of questions about, you know, what is an octopus hook? What is a standard hook? What does a slow death hook do? Stuff like that. So we're gonna cover all that now. In a future video, we're gonna talk about the differences between bargain basement, medium priced, and high-end hooks. And uh, you know, the question is, are high-end hooks worth the extra money? That's another video, but let's jump into the four main hook styles that I use when I'm out on the water targeting trout. So here's the first one, and this one seems to seems to gather a lot of interest. I'm gonna hold them up with a pliers here because I have kind of big fat fingers. And I'll hold the hook up against that pool floaty so you can see it real well. That is a Gamagatsu octopus hook, and it's a red finish hook, of course, because I love those red finish hooks. But what you'll notice about that hook, what makes it unique, is the upturned eye. That upturned eye is important for a couple different reasons. First of all, when you have an upturned eye like that, snelling the hook, you know, tying that, that wrap line on the shank of the hook is just a whole lot easier with an upturned eye than it is with a downturned eye. And when you have that upturned eye, you have the line going through the eye and then you have those wraps around the shank, it gives a nice direct pull right back to the rod tip because the line is actually attached to the shank of the hook. The other thing that an octopus hook does with that up, upturned eye, let me hold it up here again, is it gives you maximum bite. The distance between the shank of the hook and the point of the hook, the gap, so to speak, is at its maximum with an upturned eye. The bigger the gap on the hook that you have, the better that hook holds in the fish's mouth. An octopus hook, you know, all things being equal, if you set that into a fish's mouth and you, you set a bait holder hook like that into a fish's mouth with the downturned eye, that octopus hook is gonna hold better because it has a wider gap and it gets better purchase in the fish's mouth. So if I'm bait fishing, you know, with power bait or I'm tying up a double hook kokanee style rig, something like that, I'm always gonna reach for the octopus hook. Um, the snelling knot is easier with the octopus and with that wider gap, I'm getting better hooking, better hooking and holding in the mouth of a fish. <clears throat> and that's important, especially with kokanee and kings. They have a relatively soft mouth, so you want all the purchase you can get in the fish's mouth. Since I have a bait holder here in my, uh, in my pliers, let's talk about that. Let me kind of get it lined up here better so you can see it. Now, this is what a lot of, a lot of folks consider a standard hook, okay? This is your old school, you know, eagle claw hook. They used to come out of the package where you get six or eight of them in a package and they, they were pre-snelled with, you know, 500 pound test with that loop in the top. Well, that's the kind of hook you were getting. You were getting a bronze bait holder. It has a downturn eye and on the top of the shank, you can see right there, right on top of the shank, um, you've got a couple bait holder barbs, hence the term bait holder hook. 
Now, if you're going out and you are fishing bait, this is a this is a really nice hook to use, particularly if we're gonna go out into a stream and we're gonna fish something like crickets or worms or whatever, because those bait, bait holder barbs on the, on the shank of that hook absolutely help hold the bait in place, keep things where they need to be for, for, a, for a realistic presentation. The other way that these are used a lot by trout anglers is when guys go out and thread worms, okay? The old school guys, they go out, they thread worms, they thread them right on usually a number six or a number four bait holder hook. Um, they monkey around with the worm until they get it to roll. They're good to go. Usually it's it's Curtis and Maynard, the old guys in the uh, in the tin boat with the old school cowbells. They've both got on suspenders, even though they have on belts because they don't trust their pants. Those guys catch fish every day when they go out on a high Sierra Lake, and usually they're rolling those worms on a number four or a number six eagle claw bronze bait holder hook. They flat out work. I prefer the octopus hook, you know, a lot of the time when I'm fishing bait, just because it's got that wider gap and I think it hooks and holds fish better. So we've covered the octopus, we've covered the bait holder. Let's talk about the slow death hook. Um, this one is getting to be really popular. Um, it was brought to my attention through YouTube and uh, just a lot of guys are starting to use these. Now take a look at that hook. It's a long shanked hook and when I hold it in that direction there, it just looks like a standard hook. But if I turn it like that, look at the, look at the radical bends in that shank. This is a mustad slow death hook. Now this hook is intended for, this hook is intended for trolling bait. It is actually a walleye hook and those walleye guys, they do a lot of the stuff us trout guys do out here on the west coast. They like to troll worms. Um, they like to troll leeches too and I, I guarantee you if we could get our hands on some leeches they would absolutely work at a place like Lake Davis or just about anywhere. But the bottom line is those walleye guys, they like to troll bait and they like to roll bait and they came up with this hook design that enables them to roll worms and leeches and things like that very easy because that that kink that kink in the shank puts a bend in that bait the bend in the bait it encourages the bait to roll you get a, a perfect roll just about every time when you're using a slow death hook therefore they're very popular and i gotta say i've been using these for about two years now they hook and they hold they hold really well we've landed some really big fish on these hooks and you know that's a relatively light wire small hook but they hook and they hold. We've landed trout up to 12 pounds on these Mustad slow death hooks. Now here's the final hook I'm gonna talk about. And this is probably the, the hook that the guys out there in YouTube land, the guys out there at your local trout lake use the least. And what this is, this is just a simple uh, ring-eyed hook. It has a straight shank, it's like that, very straight. Um, and you can see that eye on there, the eye. It's in line with the shank and it's just round. It's a ring eye hook, okay? These hooks work great for trolling various things. You could certainly troll a worm on them. You could troll my artificial trout tricks worms on them. Um, you know, you, you could fish just about anything on these. They're nice because the eye, with the eye of the hook in direct line with the shank, all you need to do to attach your line to it is tie a decent Palomar knot and you've got a direct drive, you know, from your rod tip right down the shank of the hook into the into the point of the hook when you when you set the hook. So, you know, the straighter that connection point is, the better off you are, the more it's gonna transmit, you know, the the power of the rod into the hook set. When that, when that line is in line with the shank, it just, it just sets the hook better. So that is, a, uh, that is an example of a straight shank ring-eyed hook. Now, if you can't get your hands on slow death hooks, or maybe you don't wanna pay that premium price, I'll show you a couple tricks you can do with a straight shank ring-eyed hook, um, just like this one. Other thing to look at on that hook is that the hook point is in line with the eye of the hook and the shank of the hook. Here's what I advise you to do. Take your pliers, just like that. Grab the point of that hook, just like that, and bend it just slightly, just like that. 
and uh, let me hold it up here you'll notice what I've done is I've offset the point of that hook a little bit that makes it a lot harder if it's you know lined up along with the the line of the fish's mouth that makes it a lot harder for that fish to have the hook pull out of his mouth without him getting hooked because that that point is just a little bit offset and it, it wants to bury in the fish's mouth now if you want to turn this into a to kind of a modified slow death hook all you need to do is take your pliers grab the shank of the hook like that and just start giving it a little a little bend just like just like that now look at what we've got now I could just tell you by looking at this guy if we pin a worm or a piece of a worm on there we are going to get a nice roll that goes for a grub or whatever else we pin on there because you know we've put put the old curve in the shank of the hook and that's going to result in rotation when we pull that bait through the water so those are the four main types of hooks that I utilize when I'm out trout fishing, in addition to treble hooks, but you know, a treble hook is a treble hook is a treble hook. I didn't think it was necessary to discuss those here, but uh, I hope that answers you guys' questions. Um, next time we come back and talk about hooks, we're gonna talk about, you know, bargain basement versus medium price versus high end. Are those high end hooks, you know, worth the extra price? Well, you're going to have to wait until I make that video to find out. Um, I'm Kel Kellogg. I hope you found this information useful. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and you'll always know when I'm on here talking trout fishing. And uh, if you're looking for gear, you know where to go. Fishhuntshoot.com. Thanks a lot, guys. You stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, I will catch you next time right here on YouTube. I'm Kel Kellogg.